Warning, spoilers ahead. Today we dive into the production design of Denis Villeneuve's sequel Blade Runner 2049. Cinematographer Roger Deakins and director spent two weeks with two storyboard artists closed off in a hotel room in Montreal dreaming up the world of Blade Runner 2049 and how to display it. Dennis Kastner was responsible for the production design on the film and art direction was Paul English. The original film was based on a novel to Android's Dream of Electric Ship by Philippe K. Dick on what the future could be like in a realistic but stylized way. Blade Runner 2049 has the same concept of a dystopian future and how dark the future could be but also exciting at the same time. The story revolves around replicants and humans. Replicants are bioengineered humans working as slaves. The story is set around a Blade Runner known as Kay who is played by Ryan Gosling who is a replicant. He works at the Los Angeles Police Department. Kay uncovers a secret in a box beneath a tree of a replicant who died during a C-section. Replicants are not made to reproduce and this is the first of its kind. Kay is set out on a mission to kill the child of the replicant. The emotions I received from the beginning were feelings of mystery and excitement. The movie also tricked me with the plot twist towards the end. Throughout the film, the world is experiencing extreme global warming. The world is a much darker and more toxic place. Extreme climate change has left the most of the earth covered in rain, snow and dust. It keeps me very interested and intrigued as this is the very reality and current state of the world that we are living in. In the film, we see the technological advancements that have been put in place for human beings not to feel alone. These remind me of how in love we are with our phones and social media currently. We use technology to improve our lives but we depend on it too much and it consumes us. The camera angles combined with lighting techniques were outstanding. Do I need to say more as they were done by Oscar winner for best cinematography Roger Deakins. My favorite visual from the movie is in the Tyrell Corporation where there is a water effect reflection shadow on the walls. The film is realistic and stylized. We see a massive rising sea wall to prevent rising oceans from flooding LA. The main character Kay is a lonely man and we see this through how he is attached to artificial intelligence lover played by Anada Armas. Kay is wearing a leather coat with a big fur collar representing how cold his world is and hiding his face and identity. A lot of these costumes use furs, feathers and leather in a world where we don't see any animals because of extreme global warming. Wallace's outfit is inspired by Japanese kimono and represents the design of his symmetrical office and home. The office walls and floors were covered in wood similar to an ancient temple that Kastner had visited years ago while working on a film in Kyoto. It was an amazing piece of architecture, Kastner says. Kastner decided to replicate the same security mechanism for the futuristic office. He added a pool of water to Wallace's office because the sound is amplified when it travels over water. It was Wallace's security system, Kastner says. We see character named Love played by Sylvia Hooks who works for the Tyrell Corporation in the color white in the beginning of the film which goes to a more grey and darker as she loses composure through the film. We see Kay's character sitting in a car with lights hitting his window on the outside showing how cut off and lonely he is from society. We see all characters in the film trapped in their own world one way or another. We see the upper world as crisp, clean, where the lower world is dirty, chaotic. Another scene when Kay walks past artificial intelligence hologram that represents the same face as his lover Joy but with black eyes. I think this could represent that she is just a template with no personality to be purchased and shaped to your desire. You look lonely. I can fix that. You look like a good job. This giant holographic woman was made with one projector on a gigantic screen 
and no computer animation. Everything in the movie was constructed with practical effects and little green screen. The sets were fully functioning worlds. Los Angeles was built with plenty miniature models like the LAPD headquarters and the whole city landscape. Each building took a week to make. Each had its own fiber optic lighting installed in it. Another challenge was the Tyrell headquarters which they would call bigatures instead of miniatures because they were actually massive in structure. The use of yellow, teal and orange is a big thing even in the posters for the film. In the beginning of the film we see the house of the first replicant having an off yellow background. Then we see Kay pick a flower by the tree that has the yellow petals. As we see Kay progress through the film to Las Vegas to meet Deckard, we see the whole frame and scene filled with orange. The color represents Kay's quest for truth. Yellow shows up when he makes breakthroughs in the mystery of who he is. Monochromatic color schemes provide opportunities in art and visual communication design as they allow for a greater range of contrasting tones that can be used to attract attention and create focus. The use of yellow, teal and orange is a big thing. If there is a use of color symbolism in the film which Villeneuve uses to create tension and unease. He uses associative, striking colors to reflect the character's emotional states. We see Kay walk down badly lit streets in the city. We see plenty of silhouettes and shadows which make up scenes in the film. The shadows make you feel a sense of mystery throughout the film. High contrast is used in the film as we see dark areas are very dark and light areas are very light which stands out. High contrast makes the audience attention and makes them feel uneasy as we used to viewing everyday life in natural lighting. The use of neon lights throughout the film present dangerous hotspots in the city which include bars and lounges. Wide shots of the symmetrical balance of sets which show of reference to Japanese and Egyptian theme or aesthetic. The building that houses Jared Leto in all of its crazy glory is full of geometry. Light and shadow and expanse. Here color is absent unless it is warm use of sunlight contrasted against the blackness of the shadow. Yet even though sunlight is here, the building forces it into an angular shape. That's it for my video interpretation for production design on Blade Runner 2049. I would love for your comments below and check my references and links below the video. Thank you. Goodbye. Attack ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion. I watched sea beams glitter in the dark near the ten hours of game. All those moments will be lost in time. Like <clears throat> tears. Time to die.